everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing our Sama Yi's Coup Let's Talk Lore series with episode 8, titled Cao Shuang's Takeover. Before we get started, here's the answer to our trivia question from our previous episode, and be sure to stay tuned for the new trivia question at the end of this episode. Now, we ended last time as we mentioned the major turning point of the political battle between Sima Yi and Cao Shuang would occur in April of 247 when Sima Yi's wife, Zhang Chunhua, would die of natural causes at the age of 59. This became the turning point because following Zhang Chunhua's death, Sima Yi's eldest son, Sima Shi, decided to follow Confucian principles of filial piety as he voluntarily would resign from his post as the general of the Central Guards to guard his mother's tomb for the next three years. This removed Sima Yi's only military presence inside the capital, as the general of the Central Guard was in charge of the Luoyang City Guards. And with this, Cao Shuang immediately leaped on this opportunity to advance his position even farther. Now, up until this point, Cao Shuang and Sima Yi had coexisted as co-regents together for eight long years, and the child emperor, Cao Feng, was now turning 16, or an age where he could reasonably come to power on his own, or at least share some power with his two co-regents. But having tasted absolute power, Cao Shuang did not want to let go. So this time, as Sima Yi's power waned with Sima Shi's resignation, Cao Shuang started to target not Sima Yi, but rather the emperor, as under the advice of his advisor He Yan, Cao Shuang would force the current empress dowager, Lady Guo, who is technically the adopted mother of Cao Feng, to vacate her palace and be moved to an isolated corner of the imperial palace where she was now not allowed to see the emperor at all. The reason for this was because Han empresses and Han empress dowagers had considerable political power through their imperial seals, and two of the nine minister positions at court dealt directly with imperial clan matters. So the Empress Dowager, being the most senior member of the Imperial Clan, actually had a lot of sway. And Cao Shuang feared that Empress Dowager Guo would try to sway the Emperor and these ministers against him, as the Guo Clan were now loosely allied with the Sima Clan due to their shared connections with the Western Provinces as the Guo Clan hailed from the Liang Province out West, and mainly because both sides were being suppressed by Cao Shuang. After Cao Shuang successfully placed Empress Dowager under house arrest, the emperor became firmly under Cao Shuang's control, as Cao Shuang now controlled the imperial secretariat, who decides what and who the emperor sees from court. Cao Shuang controlled the emperor's personal bodyguards, the imperial palace guards, and now the Luoyang city guards. There was no one that could oppose him inside the capital, and Sima Yi, who was now 69 years old, knew this all too well, as just a month later, in May of 247, Sima Yi would excuse himself from court, as he would report that he had become too ill to continue his duties. In a sense, this was Sima Yi waving the white flag and conceding defeat to Cao Shuang, as well Sima Yi would remain as the Grand Tutor and Co-Regent in title after May of 247, Cao Shuang became the de facto ruler of the Kingdom of Wei, as Sima Yi would not go to court again. Now obviously Sima Yi did not get sick overnight, and despite his advanced age, he was relatively healthy at this time. Sima Yi chose to be sick, because he no longer had any political capital left, so he had to be sick, or risk being deposed by Cao Shuang, or even worse, framed for a crime and get his entire clan killed. Speaking of the Sima clan, at this time, only Sima Yi's younger brother, Sima Fu, held a high position, as he was still the chief treasurer of the court. And because Sima Fu had always been well aware of the political struggles between Cao Shuang and his clan, he was extremely cautious about his job and remained quite low-key at court. So there was never any chance or opportunity to make a move against him. Sima Yi's eldest son, Sima Shi, had already resigned for tomb guarding duties, and his second son, Sima Zhou, only held a lowly imperial court advisor title following his participation 
in that failed attack on Hanzhong. So for the most part, the Sima clan were lying low together, as they now all feared that one wrong move could give Cao Shuang the excuse and opportunity to punish and kill off their entire clan. Now for Cao Shuang, this political victory gave him a sense of invincibility, as he started to let the power go over his head. Under the influence of his advisor He Yan, Cao Shuang started to indulge in the finer things of life, as he would extend the number of concubines he had, going as far as secretly stealing 11 of late Emperor Cao Rui's former concubines who were still young and to Cao Shuang's taste. This obviously was tabooed and a crime punishable by death, but there was no one left to enforce the law on Cao Shuang, who would also move imperial musical instruments designed only for the enjoyment of the emperor back to his own estate for his personal enjoyment. This too technically was a crime punishable by death, and to ensure his own safety and continue enjoyment of life, Cao Shuang would take control of the weapon depot in Luoyang and move his own estate right next to this vital storage facility, as he would often use the guards in charge of guarding the weapon depot as handyman to help him expand his estate and build spaces where he would throw lavish parties with his close circle of advisors. As the parties continued to get more out of hand, Cao Shuang's younger brother, Cao Xi, who we mentioned before as the most virtuous member of Cao Shuang's inner circle, started to warn his older brother that their behaviors would catch the ire of the court and eventually doom them. But Cao Shuang was in no mood to get lectured on by his own younger brother, as Cao Xi's words would go unheard. Not willing to give up, Cao Xi would then write three short stories with antidotes hinting at Cao Shuang's behavior and their consequences, but once again, Cao Shuang would not listen, as Cao Xi would eventually get distant by Cao Shuang. As time passed, Cao Shuang only felt more invincible, as almost a year and a half later, Sima Yi remained ill. Emperor Cao Fang remained powerless, despite now being 18 years old, and Empress Dowager Guo remained under house arrest, and the world was Cao Shuang's oyster. And this inflated sense of security gave Cao Shuang the confidence to take trips outside the capital, as he wanted to enjoy life outside of Luoyang. So frequent hunting trips were planned out, but at the same time, Cao Shuang knew there were risks involved, so he would always take the emperor with him on such trips as he knew control of the emperor was vital to his power. Aside from the emperor, Cao Shuang would also always take his five younger brothers with him on all these trips as well. This alerted the minister of agriculture at the time in Huan Fan, who was a political ally to Cao Shuang as the two shared a hometown and were familiar with each other. Huan Fan suggested to Cao Shuang that he and Cao Xi, who controlled the Imperial Palace Guards, should not be both away from the capital at the same time, as then no one was left to command the troops inside the Imperial Palace. But Cao Shuang did not listen to this suggestion for two reasons. First, he believed that as long as he had the Emperor with him, the Imperial Palace was just a meaningless palace. And second, Perhaps a point most people miss is that Cao Shuang probably did not trust his younger brothers, especially Cao Xi, who had repeatedly spoken out against his behavior prior to this, and even for the other brothers as well, for any of them could try to replace him. Fundamentally, there was nothing that made Cao Shuang special. He had no political achievements or military success to his name, and all the power he enjoyed come from his control of the imperial court, the emperor, and the military forces inside the capital. There is nothing stopping one of his brothers from killing him and then taking over in his steed. This was a key reason why Cao Shuang always traveled with the emperor and all his brothers every time he left the capital. By late 248, Sima Yi was no longer his main concern, as Sima Yi was now 70 years old, and whether he was faking an illness or not, logically speaking, his health can't be that great or so Cao Shuang thought. But to make sure, Cao Shuang even sent his advisor, Li Sheng, who had just been promoted to become the next prefect of the Jin province, to make a visit to Sima Yi's home and check on the old man prior to his departure from the capital. And to find out what Li Sheng would see in Sima Yi's home, come back next time as we'll return then to finally discuss the events of the infamous coup or the Gao Pingling incident. 
Hopefully y'all have enjoyed this episode enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more contents like this on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below or hitting that like button. As this series winds down to its final two episodes, I'm going to up the goal and need 400 likes this time before the next episode drops. So as always, I'll see you all then. Bye!